Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to DNews Plus again today. I'm Trace, and this is episode 204 in our week on calendars. We're going to explain exactly how we got to the second and the minute and the day and the week and the month and the year, all of that stuff. So make sure you stick around for all of those things. Make sure you subscribe. If you haven't shared the show with your friend yet, please take a second. I'm sure someone would appreciate knowing there's 9 billion vibrations of a cesium atom in a second. If you didn't watch yesterday's episode, that might not make sense to you. So go back and watch that. But today, now that we know about a day and how long it is officially, how did we decide that there were seven days in a week, right? As we learned earlier, 12 was a big number, as was 60. But seven is also a very important number to ancient humans. Some credit that back to our friends the Babylonians. Seven days equals seven important things in the sky. So let's count them off. We've got the sun, that's pretty important. We've got the moon, also important. And the five planets that you can see with the naked eye. Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, and Saturn. There are similar patterns seen in other ancient cultures outside of Babylonia, like China and Japan, because they can also see all seven of those things. Another theory is the Babylonians marked time with the moon. The first day of the month is a visible crescent moon. The seventh day is a waxing half moon. The 14th is a full moon. 21st is a waning half moon. And 28th is a visible crescent. So you would see that over and over again. And if you divide that up, that would explain why you would have a seven-day week. Seven, as a number, was also important in Judaism. Creation story, seven days. And that was possibly written about 500 BC during the Jewish exile in Babylon, which makes a connection back to the seven again. But the official seven day week goes back to ancient Rome. They originally used an eight day week called a Nundinal cycle, I think. Let me know if I messed that one up. Uh, each day was represented by a letter, A through H. The eighth day would be a market day. It's called a market cycle, where people would come into the city and they would buy eight days worth of goods, they would leave and they'd come back again on the eighth day. Over time, the seven day week becomes more popular and talk about a mind job, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, imagine if you were used to the eight day week, you just gotta get a whole new calendar at that point. Officially, they adopted the seven day week in 321 AD and it was adopted by Emperor Constantine. Romans named days of the week after their gods and corresponded those, of course, with planets because the Romans thought of the moon and the sun as planets, which sounds a lot like the Babylonians. Sunday, Solus, based on the sun. Monday, Luna, based on the moon. Tuesday, Martis, based on Mars, so on and so forth. Because Constantine was Christian, he made Sunday the Christian official day of rest. He also made it the first day of the week, which isn't adopted all over the world today. The first day of the week is different in different countries. In the U.S., it's Sunday, but it's not the case in, like, Brazil, which is interesting because they're both based on Christianity, some would say. And Saturday was the Jewish day of rest. That was the last day of the week. But the days of the week went through another change. See, Germanic people, they put their own twist on the names for the days. Sunday and Monday were still named for the sun and the moon. But in some cultures, Sunday changed from the sun to translate to something similar to Lord's Day, again, because of the Christian Sabbath. And Tuesday was named after the Norse god Tyre. I might have mispronounced that. Let me know if you know better. And that corresponded to Mars. So again, still connections to the Roman day, but named after different things. Wednesday was another Norse god, Woden's day, connected to Mercury, although now in Germany it's Mittwoch, meaning midweek. I don't know what's going on there. Thursday is Thor's day, connected to Jupiter, as it was in Rome. And Friday was named for Odin's wife, Freya. But the Germanic and the Norse, they didn't change Saturday, which is interesting. They kept it named after Saturn. Others eventually changed it to fit other needs. The Spanish and French had Sabbath, and again, Saturday, the Hebrew Sabbath, and Dutch, they would have it be bath day. So all these different cultures would use the seven-day system and kind of tweak it to their own needs. And speaking of tweaking, the word week comes from the old Norse word vikja, meaning to turn. The seven-day week actually reaches back to about 600 BC, and it was spread by the influence of Rome, because Rome spread so far across the Western world. 
The Christian Church, because it became part of Rome in the Holy Roman Empire, also spread that influence of the seven-day week. And since they were the civilized group and they were imposing these ideas on top of all of these other cultures, we still use it today. Although some have tried to destroy it since, in 1929, the Soviet Union wanted a five-day week and six weeks in a month. They thought a seven-day week, that was too similar to what the religious nations were doing. And communists and the Soviet Union, they, they didn't want any religion in there, so they thought a five-day week was better. But if you are smart and you've done the math on that, the five-day week and six weeks in a month doesn't add up to the full complement for a whole year. So the five missing days, that became five new holidays. In 1931, however, they went back to a six-day week, and in 1940, they went back to a seven-day week, which, again, just super confusing. For a little while, which I just think this is fantastic, the French used a 10-day week just for a brief period, between 1793 and 1806. And then again, for some reason, in 1871. They were trying out metric time. The day was divided into 10 hours of 100 minutes and 100 seconds. That made 100,000 seconds in a day. The month were three decades of 10 days. It was just confusing. It did not work. Obviously, they only tried it for a little while. Eastman Kodak, the camera company here in the U.S., invented their own calendar. There's an amazing 99% invisible episode about that. If you haven't tuned in, go check that out. In modern times, however, we think of the week divided up into five work days with two off days. So, you know, work days and then a weekend. But many people used to work six days, and then they would have Sunday off. And different cultures pick different days for their weekend. In Syria, the weekend starts earlier, and because they don't need to worry about the same religious implications that parts of the West had to worry about. Uh, the weekend term was first coined in 1879 in an English magazine. In the 19th century, the Britons started using Sabbath days for enjoyment instead of religion. They you know, party on Sunday, Sunday fun day, then they'd call in sick on Monday. So factory bosses compromised and gave them a half day off on Saturday so they could start their party a little early if they promised to come in on Monday. In 1908, the first American factory to give a full Saturday off was to accommodate Jewish workers, and the Great Depression may have made that two-day weekend permanent. As I already pointed out, this is based mainly in Western Christian nations or nations that have Christian influence. In Muslim countries, Friday is the beginning of their weekend because it's their Sabbath. And then either Thursday or Friday or Friday or Saturday would be their weekend. But it changes depending on where you are in the world. And I think that is so interesting. And I think it's even more interesting that the days come down to astronomy, where the formation of the week came down to how the planets and the sun mixed with religion and God and the Sabbath. But all of those things, all of those weeks, eventually had to be divided up and fit into months. But who are we honoring with months? If every day has meaning, what does every month mean? And why is there a weird R in February? We're probably not gonna get into that, but that's fine. <laughs> Let us know down in the comments what your favorite day of the week is. If it's Monday, that's weird, and please tell us why. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe for more DNews Plus. You can come find the show over on Twitter. We're at DNews. We're also, if you want to talk to me, at Trace Dominguez. Thanks for tuning in.